Hey guys, I might start doing more videos out here because I, my gosh, didn't realize how hot it was in my office until I stepped out of it. I just finished work for the day and uh, I previously tried to record this video a few days ago in that office with the fans off and I was sweating all the way through it and then realized that I didn't capture any audio. So we're doing this again and I'm out in my backyard. The weather is lovely. Uh, it's, you know, I'm in the shade here a little bit. And so today I'm going to be bringing you another bedtime book review. This one is The Owl and the Pussycat and Other Silly Time Tales. It doesn't say on the front for some reason, but it's by Edward Lear and illustrated by Chuck Reisner. So I looked up to make sure that I was getting this right for you. Uh, Edward Lear was a 19th century poet uh, and artist. He was known among other things for his nonsense verse uh, for children. So if you're not familiar, you probably are. We all had to read like the Jabberwocky in middle school. That's the same kind of idea here. Silly little poems that are just fun for little kids. And they make excellent bedtime stories. This particular edition with the illustrations by Chuck Reisner He's a copy that um, my parents gave to me because this is actually the same book that we had growing up. Um, and so I have a lot of fond memories wrapped up in this particular version. There are other versions available um, in different illustrations for the same poems. So they're you know disjointed. Um, Chuck Reisner is a modern um, illustrator and I believe he is still active. The other thing I wasn't really able to determine from a quick Google search, um, there's a Chuck Reasoner who's active in the 90s who's this, and then there's a Charles Reasoner who's active in the 2000s who does a different kind of a style, and I'm not sure if they're the same person or not. So if you're interested in looking that up, go ahead, let me know if you find anything. Um, but most of you are probably just interested in hearing some of the poems. So I was going to read all three of them, but I think because <laughs> For one thing, it's not that hard to find these if you're interested in them and read them yourself. I'm just going to read my favorite one to you today. But this book um, has lovely little illustrations and features three poems by Edward Lear, all pretty short, The Owl and the Pussycat, The Jumblies, and The Popple Who Had No Toes. And I'm going to be reading The Jumblies because it's my favorite. It's also slightly the longest, I think. And I wanted to share it with you. They went to sea in a sieve, they did. In a sieve, they went to sea. In spite of all their friends could say on a winter's morn, on a stormy day, in a sieve, they went to sea. And when the sieve turned round and round and everyone cried, you'll all be drowned, they called aloud, our sieve ain't big, but we don't care a button, we don't care a fig. In a sieve, we'll go to sea. Far and few, far and few are the lands where the jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve. They sailed away in a sieve, they did. In a sieve they sailed so fast with only a beautiful pea green veil tied with a ribbon by way of a sail to a small tobacco pipe mast. And everyone said who saw them go, oh, won't they soon be upset, you know, for the sky is dark and the voyage is long and happen what may, it's extremely wrong in a sieve to sail so fast. Far and few, far and few are the lands where the jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve. The water it soon came in, it did. The water it soon came in. So to keep them dry, they wrapped their feet in a pinky paper all folded neat and they fastened it down with a pin. And they passed the night in a crockery jar and each of them said, how wise we are. Though the sky be dark and the voyage be long, yet never can we think we were rash or wrong while well, round in our sieve we spin. Far and few, far and few are the lands where the jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve. And all night long they sailed away and when the sun went down, they whistled and warbled a moony song to the echoey sound of a coppery gong in the shade of the mountains brown. Oh, Timbalo, how happy we are when we live in a sieve in a crockery jar. And all night long in the moonlight pale, we sail away with a pea green sail in the shade of the mountains brown. Far and few, far and few are the lands where the jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue and they went to sea in a sieve. 
They sailed to the western sea, they did, to a land all covered with trees. And they bought an owl and a useful cart, and a pound of rice and a cranberry tart, and a hive of silvery bees. And they bought a pig and some green jackdaws, and a lovely monkey with lollipop paws, and forty bottles of rainbow re, and no end of Stilton cheese. Far and few, far and few are the lands where the Jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea in a sieve. And in 20 years they all came back, in 20 years or more, and everyone said how tall they've grown, for they've been to the lakes and the terrible zone and the hills of the Chankly Boar. And they drank their health and gave them a feast of dumplings made of beautiful yeast. And everyone said, if only we live, we too will go to sea in a sieve to the hills of the Chankly Boar. Far and few, far and few are the lands where the Jumblies live. Their heads are green and their hands are blue, and they went to sea in a sieve. There you go. So as you can see, the illustrations are so charming. I love that there's just like things that you can point out from the story that um, are in the illustration. Um, so that makes it really easy to sort of interact with children. Uh, little toddlers love to, you know, point out the, you know, the, the crabs or the owls or the pussy cats and all of that. Um, and I think they're really cute illustrations, so that helps. There's a little picture like I showed you with a, a two-page spread at the end of each story, um, and then a, a page along with each, you know, every page of text has a page of illustration as well, all three of these little stories. I think they're just really cute, and I actually have nothing negative to say about this book at all, so that's new for me. Uh, I just wanted to share it with you because it's been making me happy lately. Um, it makes for a really great bedtime story if Agnes is feeling like just a quick one. Um, I'll just let her pick which one she wants and she can point to the picture on the cover so that's helpful. Um, if she wants all three of them then it's not even that long to read all three of them. And then as she gets a little bit older I really do like um, the repetitiveness especially of the Jumblies. The other ones have a little bit more uh, repetitiveness as well. Um, and so that makes it really easy. I would remember like having that far and few, far and few refrain memorized. Um, and when my parents would read it to me, I would say that part along with them. So that's just a list of things I like about this book. If you're interested, it is available on Amazon. Um, I haven't been linking to Amazon because I haven't been, but what I do have is a bookshop.org affiliate page but this isn't on it. So you can look at my whole list of bedtime book reviews. Um, and if the book that I'm reviewing is on that list, you'll find a link in the description. Otherwise you're on your own. So that's the deal. Um, if you have any suggestions for other books that I should review in this series, do leave them down in comments below because I'm always on the lookout for new fun books for my little toddler. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my videos twice a week. And I'll see you in the next one on Thursday. Bye. Thank you.